Growing up, I was a huge fan of the TV show Bewitched, as was some of the other shows that were part of my formative TV diet during my youth. Bewitched was so successful because of the supremely talented cast. Elizabeth Montgomery was perfect as the beautiful Samantha, a young witch who falls in love with a guy who is the epitome of normal. Agnes Moorhead was equally amazing as her mother and Dora, and David White and Paul Lynn, well, just so much fun. However, that said, the unsung hero of the show was the actor who played Sam's husband, Darren. I've often contended that the role of the straight man in comedy is perhaps the most difficult and unappreciated role of all. Dick York, the actor who first played Darren, yes, there, your eyes weren't deceiving you, there were two of them, is the perfect example of what I am talking about. And to the chagrin of everyone involved in the show, he was hiding a secret. Dick York was already an established actor prior to being cast as Darren on Bewitched. He was in feature films as well as television shows, playing opposite legends such as Gary Cooper and Gene Kelly. It was while filming the 1959 motion picture that came to Cordova that York's life changed forever. During the making of that film, York injured his back in a freak accident. At the time, it didn't seem like a big deal. He was young, and the pain, while frequent, was tolerable. He finished the film and thought little of the injury until years later when the persistent pain became more frequent and painful. It was at this time that he was up for the role of Darren on Bewitched. He actually wasn't the first person on the minds of the producers of the show. They wanted a guy named Dick Sargent. They loved his screens test and were prepared to go with Sargent, but he passed on the role to star in another TV show that turned out to not be as successful as Bewitched. But anyway, let's get back to Dick York. He really wanted the role of Darren and he knew that he would be awesome in it. So when Sargent passed and the opportunity was presented, he didn't feel like it was the right time to tell anyone about his secret pain. He was determined to deal with the health issue on his own and make the best of a tremendous opportunity. And make the best he did. For the next five seasons, York played the perfect foil to the antics of his beautiful wife Sam and her hugely overbearing mother Endora. Throughout those five seasons, York worked through the daily pain heroically. As time went on, many of the other cast and crew members became aware of York's secret, and they did their best to help him. Scenes were constructed in such a way that York could be sitting down, or in some cases, even lying down. Crew members would also help York get up after lying on a board in his trailer to help straighten his back. Bottom line, these people had become York's extended family, and they cared deeply for him. While filming a particularly physical and difficult scene that required York to be hung in the air on wires, he passed out and found himself in a hospital. The show's producer asked York if he wanted out so that he could have time to recover. Right or wrong, from that hospital bed, Dick York made a decision that would forever change his life. He bowed out of a show that was supremely successful, from a show that he had been nominated for an Emmy Award that very year. Instead of getting better, things got worse for York and his family. He became hooked on painkillers, and it would take him years to shake the addictions that come from reliance upon prescription medicines. The offers to act stopped. York didn't really understand why. It is ironic that at a time when I first discovered Bewitched, watching it in syndicated reruns during the mid-70s, Dick York and his wife were cleaning offices to make ends meet. I would never have imagined it. It's hard to believe that this talented man had found himself in a place where he would need to work the most modest of jobs to keep food on his family's table. Eventually, York figured out that part of the reason he wasn't getting job offers was because of a clerical mix-up. I don't understand how that could have happened. But that's the story as told by York and others. And once that was resolved, he did find work in the 80s on shows like Simon and Simon and Fantasy Island. That said, Dick York's time as a television superstar had long since passed. After season five and York's decision to vacate the role of Darren, the show's producers went back to Dick Sargent and offered him the role again. His other show, a sitcom called Broadside, had only lasted a year, and he was only too happy to take over the role. Sargent did a fine job as Darren. 
He wasn't exactly the same guy. His demeanor, at least to me, was a little more prickly. Not the same kind and ever patient personality that York had portrayed. Still, Sargent was a suitable replacement and the show continued on for three more seasons. I think audiences preferred York's Darren and proof of that would be the ratings decline that really started happening with season six. Sure, you could argue that the show just ran out of steam, but I'd like to think that York's absence also played a part. Dick York's final years were spent helping the homeless. He wasn't rich by any means, but he and his wife of many years had landed on their feet, and York could never, ever forget the tough times brought on by his secret health problems. He felt a kinship to people who were faced with challenges that truly tested them and sometimes, worst case scenario, forced them out on the streets. Dick York's dark secret also helped inspire the kindness and compassion that he demonstrated during his final years. When you couple those efforts with the smiles and laughter that Dick York still brings to us all through his wonderful work on Bewitched, well, you truly have a life well lived. So, who was your favorite, Darren? York or Sargent? Did you even notice the change? I think most people did. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, and while you're at it, please click on the thumbs up and subscribe buttons. That's how I'll know to make more videos like this one. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.